Good morning, everybody. My name is Olivia O'Connor, and I am really happy to be here with you on this beautiful sunny day. I hope it is where you are. Uh, we're going to be doing some more woodblock carving. So if you tuned in a couple of months ago, we did a very basic uh, woodblock print here. So this is our block that we carved. We just carved it in a piece of plywood. Really simple to do. We pretty much only used two different gouges to carve it and a couple of decorative um, stamps. So this time I thought it'd be fun to do the same design, but we're going to use better quality timber and a bigger variety of tools and see how much of a better job we can do. Here are the, um, excuse me a sec. Here are the prints we did last month. And if you did tune into that, you were, sorry, two, two or three months ago, I was really hoping that the rough grain of the plywood would um, give us some beautiful water texture. You can see it is a really nice texture, but in a kind of happy accident, I kind of think this tool marking here looks more like choppy water, which is this area here where I haven't carved down deep enough. But we are going to carve along and learn and adapt <laughs> and make improvements as we go. So we're going to be printing at the end of this live stream. Hopefully we'll get a much more refined fish than this. And like I say most live streams, because I am in regional Victoria, if the internet cuts out, please bear with me. The live stream will sort of abruptly stop and it will take me one, two minutes to uh, reset it up and I'll do that. So that's from a few months ago. Here we have the same design, fraction smaller block of wood, but that's okay. I'm carving on just a chunk of jelly tong. I probably won't get many reprints if I'm washing out of this one. I was really hoping to use a piece of maple, but with restrictions, I wasn't able to go up to Melbourne and get any. But here we go. Um, let's get cracking. We'll be carving this design. I'll be carving a little faster than normal as well just because we've got an awful lot of detail to try and churn through today. Ah, the chat is working. That's always good news. Message from Simone. Ah, oh, I'm so glad you couldn't make it to the live stream. I did see your previous message, Simone. Good morning to you. All right, here we go. And as always, if anyone has any questions, please pop them in the chat as we go along. Um, to secure my work today, I just have a plank of wood, two L brackets just uh, screwed on. They just cut out of plywood. You can see my piece just pops in like that. Uh, good morning, Roderick. Thank you. Ah, oh, we've got a message from you. Couldn't get all the materials. Uh, you had to pay over $600 for a hammer. Look, there are problems in life, aren't there? <laughs> all right. So big first task will be removing this background area. I am just going to come in with a V tool and a mallet, quite a large beetle, and I am just going to try and get a little deeper than I did last time. So you can see I've got quite a high angle. Getting quite a deep groove here. And the reason I want to go deeper is because last time I clearly didn't go deep enough and we got this texturing but I really like that. I'm going to use that for the water texture down here this time. Just working my way around a little drip. They'll be pretty fragile and we've lost one already. Let's hope the other ones can stay in place. Lots of little taps as I'm running with the grain there and trying to change direction. You see that kind of really wants to split out up there, but that is all right.
Beauty of L-shaped brackets and not actually clamping your workpiece down, you can just flip it really quickly. See, that really wants to split, but we won't worry about that. Gonna come in a little deeper around here. Now I'm gonna try and keep some of these water droplets. They might be a little too fiddly for this timber. See, I'm angling that tool. Ah, oh, so sorry if anyone wants to know. That is a seven F. 10, I'm going to angle away from that drop. If I angled in like this or straight up and down, I could just pop that whole thing out. So let's give this a shot. Do all of these in the same direction. So that angled cut was essentially, not essentially, it was, it was just a stop cut. Now I'm just coming into it. Come from this side. really trying to clean up around those because last time we lost all our water drops because the uh, plywood wasn't fine enough to keep that level of detail so I'd really like to try and keep them today so really angling that I've angled that the wrong way how stupid angle away from your drops Concentrating too much to say a lot. So if anyone has, oh, we've lost that drop. If anyone has any questions as we go along, please let me know. I'm just going to add another water drop in here then. That's because I angled that first cut the wrong way and I couldn't rectify that. up for you now those water drops there 
you can see how they're much wider at the base than they are at the top, and that's what's keeping them in and stopping them from popping out. So just remember that whenever you're carving little, little shapes. Okay, we've got a few more drops here. I will remember the correct way to do this this time. And here where I don't have room to anchor my hand onto the wood comfortably, I'm anchoring my, you can't see it because I'm all in black, but my hip, my elbow into my hip. So now I have space and I can use my finger. I am just going to carve up here in case that wants to split out. My points here don't touch, so I'm just going to bring that tool around. Just give it a little push. You can see how soft this timber is. Makes it really easy to carve. Usually hardwoods are a little easier to carve than softwoods, but because you can see the, this grain, I'll show you the end. So you can hardly even see. The pause there, it is so tight and so consistent. But it works really, really well. Just come in here. I'm just wiggling that for extra control there. Okay, now I'm gonna remove this background. So I'm gonna try for starters a 3F, you can't even see that stamping anymore. This is a 3F20. If you've watched enough of these, you'll know this is pretty much my favourite tool. I use it for just about everything. Might use something a bit wider. This is still a 20 mils wide, but number five, so it's got a bit more of a scoop. Uh, yep. Just a bit more meaty there. Quite rough here because I'm carving off the edge of my piece and away from everything I want to be careful of. Sounds good, doesn't it? I bet you guys can hear that as we're cutting through. You hear a bit of ripping there. Now here, because I don't want to slip out and remove this tiny fragment of a splash we've got, I'm just going to define that a little better. Um, I'm going to be a lot more careful. I'm going to use quite a scooping action and a twist. So I'm starting my cut on this side of the blade and I'm going to finish the other side. See, it's giving me a lot more control over everything. I'm going to just try to split straight out along that grain line there.
just going to wiggle this into the bottom of that V-cut groove there. Kind of shave that back. I'm going to take out more around these uh, water drops because the deepest point that they go isn't as far back as this background. So I'm going to rest my tool following that same angle. I can just feel where it was. Just tap it in a bit deeper there. And then I'm going to come around to the points, I think. This will work. Wiggle that for a bit of extra stability. Well, that's worked. So let's replicate that on these other drops. Push that in. I'm hitting my light. Just <laughs> background removal is not one of my uh, more favored components of carving, but that is all right. It is super, super necessary. You just got to make sure you really don't rush it. Otherwise, you'll end up cutting out valuable sections of your finished piece. Okay, so now we've got these little sections here. See, I'm really twisting that into that tool, so I'm coming against that grain there. Noise, if you're getting resistance from one direction, just try coming at it from another side and see if that behaves a little better. Gosh, my tool only just fit through that little gap. Should have really been using something smaller. This is a number three F six mils wide. So see, quite a bit smaller than that. But still with a bit of a curve. Ah, hello, more people joining. Thank you. If you've got any questions, please pop them in the chat. I have popped up that little guy there. I got too excited. Be nice to save some of there goes another drop. Let's make it our goal by the end of this background removal to have some water drops left at least. Oh, we've got a question. Just got myself some hewn logs. Thank you. Hope you're carving experience. Oh, beautiful. Gosh, you're very lucky to get logs of that. Yeah, they'll make some beautiful, beautiful spoons. See this little, so I'm carving, I'm getting this little burr line. 
That just means this tool has knocked, nicked something. Since I've been carving, which is annoying, and it's just got a little, little ding right there. And it's just giving me a little scratch line. Does not matter for what we're doing here. Um, regularly, I would stop and sharpen that out. But you can see this timber is so soft. We're carving through it so easily. And in the effort of trying to get this printed <laughs> by the end of today, I'm just going to ignore that. Yeah, sometimes I do uh, find myself carving too fast. I'm really trying to make myself slow down today because I am going a bit fast, but I am finding the pressure of trying to get this printed is <laughs> really pressing on me. Also, like I said, I'm not a fan of removing the background necessarily. So I always try and rush through the jobs I don't particularly like. Just going to cut that a little deeper with my V tool, quite a steep angle, and off the edge. Uh, just looking for something else. I hmm, haven't laid that out. That's all right. Back to my 3F, it's all little points. Just gonna cut that dag off there. As you can see, because I'm doing most of my outlines with the V tool, I'm getting a sloped edge and it's not a harsh up and down edge. For this style of carving, it doesn't really matter because I won't be printing the slopes. But if I wanted it to be really neat after cutting with my beetle, I'd just come along like that and cut everything straight down. Get a real little guy again to fiddle in around here. This is what I've been trying to see at the corner of my eye. Uh, number five, 12. Also, if you watch a lot of these, you'll realize that number fives is one of my favorite sweeps. Just really trying to give that those water drops a bit of extra space. Because I'm losing more than I wanted to. Just see, we've got some more questions come in. Yes, I do come too fast. Oh, that's an awesome, awesome size bit of uh, log you've got there. And off Facebook, gosh, that's a good find. Yes, so I am carving a woodblock printing plate today. A few months ago, we carved this one. So same design, but we carved out of plywood and pretty much only using two tools to do the entire thing. So we didn't get a lot of detail. So this was a really good uh, beginner's uh, woodblock carving print. And today we're doing the same design, better timber, more tools, hopefully to get a uh, much better result. Just wiggling that because I can't really get my mallet in because I've got a light just there. But if that light wasn't there, I would be giving that a tap with the mallet.
I'm going to have to flip that and not be lazy. You see, I'm really, really scooping action to really have control as I come in to this line of my fish here. suppose if you're really keen and you are much better with a router than I am, you could probably use a router to remove your background, actually. Wiggle that. Be really careful in between these two drops here because if I splinter out one way, it might remove my next one. Is this going to fit between? You know what? You could actually carve this without the water drops and then just with a dot of paint. <laughs> Afterwards, add them on and save yourself a lot of trouble and I'm kind of wishing I'd thought of that earlier, to tell you the truth. So really just trying to clean between all my drops. And yeah, if I was to do this again, I'd probably carve it without the drops. And then just stick them in afterwards. So I don't know if they're gonna be worth all this effort, but we will find out. Yeah, it is cheating if you use a, um, a router. I also wouldn't trust that I'd be able to control the router enough and it wouldn't just run off. Yeah, I think I think um, someone said that CoverTech used to have a field sweep guide in their hard cover catalogue. I think they still do. I think they still do. My catalogue is 2019 and that one does. I know there's a sweep guide on the website though. And for those of you who don't know, the sweep is that curve of the blade there, that way, and it is the first number on your tool. So if that's a 512, it means it's the sweep number 5, 12 millimetres wide. Oh, you meant I'm cheating if I did the if I painted on the drops. I don't know if that'd be cheating. If it saved me half an hour. But we did lose all our drops with the uh, plywood because the grain just wasn't enough to hold it. You see, I'm really twisting that tool there because I'm in this tight area. I don't want to run out too much. Cut your dags off, never rip them off. A little deep with my VTOL here. I'm really trying to make an effort to get this background down deeper than I did on the previous one. So that hopefully we won't have black marks on our background. And you can cut your dags off by just running your VTOL back through as well. It doesn't have to be that fancy. I've lost the end of his tail there, so I'm just going to recut that round. No, no, no. Now, at this stage, I'm just going to recut round all of my fish here. So I can see what is an extended dag that actually needs proper cutting off and what's just hanging on around the edge. Twisting to get around that corner. A 
little rip here. I'm just going to use the edge of that V tool to slice off. You can screw in there, so I'll be smart and come this way. Pick that up. Gosh, it's wedged in. You'll find once you start getting little um, chips going everywhere, if they get down a side like in there, you can really kind of very firmly secure your piece. Got another question. Oh, there's a lot of different ways to be carving this in. It all depends on the finished finished result you want. We could have done like just where our pencil lines were just come, on, come in with a V tool and then we would have printed it and we would have had a black background with just a white line drawing of a fish, which could also be quite effective. But it really depends on your finished result you're after. I think what we're establishing is there is many a way to cheat <laughs> once you start thinking about it. Now, so background that's going to give me issues. Little chunky here, here, and here, and here. So let's just neaten those areas up. Like I said, I will be printing this at the end of the live stream as well. Just wiggle that through there. It's a bit tight. Make it fit. Get a finer V tool to fit in there. So that is a number 12 four. Slide that through. Okay, so I'm hoping, even though that background is a bit rough, let's be honest about that, that that will be uh, low enough that it hopefully won't pick up any ink from the roller. So we need to pattern our fish and we need to get the water texture. Now, if anyone missed it, um, I'll show you the previous one we did a few months ago. Here's where we didn't remove the, oh, not we, I didn't remove the background down deep enough. And you can see it's got all these really chippy tool marks. And I think they actually make a really, really nice water texture there. So that's mistake printing that we're hoping won't happen with this one today but I'm going to try and replicate this chippy sort of pattern that I've mistakenly created on the previous one in the water here. I'm going to try and kind of curl it around in a circular fashion so it does look like rings radiating out. I haven't done a test or practice of that, so please all cross your fingers for me that this will work and I won't be making a massive fool of myself on the internet. So... Using quite an exaggerated, trying to keep these sections short. Okay. 
curling. I'm taking those a little longer than I'd like, so I'm really going to really exaggerate that sweep to make them shorter. This doesn't work, we'll just be left with a very black, messy patch of water. But let's hope this is gonna pay off. Gonna lift that up. See, we are getting really fine texture. I'm not going deep at all because I actually want to keep the top points of this layer. Coming around here so I can carve this back side of the fish um, with that same tool. And then I'm going to use my wider tool to do sort of the more foreground area and hope that'll create a bit more uh, depth. But it's got, I need to cut around that tail there. So I'm not going to use my VTOL because I don't want quite a thick line between the water and his tail. I'm going to come in with my 3F number 20. And again, I've got that bevel side up and I'm really angling that away from that fish because we are coming to quite a point. Now, because I'm on the inside of that curve, I'm going to work bevel side down and angle away. So I've got the tiniest bit. I've got a little uh, Mora knife. I'm just going to try and cut that. There we go. That slightest bit off. I've gone too heavy on that back side. That's all right. See, that's what we're doing there. I've got a question about sharpening. I sharpen all mine by hand. I don't um, use Tormex or anything. Uh, quite a few months ago now, I actually did a live stream on um, sharpening where I show you guys how I sharpen. So if you're interested, you can look that up as well. And in that video, I spent quite a bit of time explaining that I don't technically uh, sharpen hardly ever, I use a strop nearly all the time. And a strop is a piece of leather um, with or without any number of different types of polishing compounds. Some people use graphite. Some people use like jeweler's rouge, um, like car polish I've heard people use. I personally like to use the feel stropping compounds. So it's the same same feel that makes the gouges. They also make a stropping compound, and I've found that works the best. It kind of makes sense that the people making the tools knows what type of polishing compound works best with them. Stropping compound, sorry, I mean. So now I'm going to use a slightly wider I wonder if that's going to be too wide for that. So there I was using a number seven. So we got seven mils wide. I'm going to try, going to try stagger that to a number 12 and then to a number 20. Because I was, my plan was to go straight from that to my number 20 mil wide, but I think it might be too much of a jump 
in the size of my water ripples. We'll find out. Actually, I don't know if I'm going to go in number 20 at all. I don't know if I'm going to have space to get that. I don't know, be getting it in this top corner. I don't think that's worth it and it might look really weird. The sun's just um, gone behind a cloud, so it's suddenly got a lot darker in here, so I hope you can all still see. I almost didn't set my lamp up. It was so bright this morning, but I'm glad I did now. Really twisting that. Uh, if you haven't already, it'd be really nice if anyone watching could please like this video. That would be great. And I can keep doing them for you. So you can see that is our water texture. There's not a lot of depth going on, but I'm hoping that roll is just going to pick up those top top points. Oh, thanks for already liking. Um, pick up those top points and we will get something nice. That's always a goal, isn't it? Something nice at the end of this. So I'm going to have this fish is going to be majority black with his details kind of cut away. So we'll cut his little smile in. I'm just going to use a VTOL but I'm going to use a finer V-tool here. Now twisting my whole body around as I curve that tool to follow that smile shape. For the eye, I am just going to use a nail punch to get something nice and circular. There we go. I don't think I can do all three gills. I think that looks a bit much, but I will just come in with that beetle. Really twisting to get around that bend as I'm fighting that grain there. And I might just give him another little one. There we go. I'm going to outline this wrong way. If it starts to rip, I don't know if you could hear that, but I could hear it and feel it. Let's come the other direction. Just along these back here for this top fin. How nice and satisfying is it when they curl like that? At Christmas time, I always get people telling me I should save them and sell them as Christmas tree decorations. Just running around this way to carve these little lines here. If you're in his fin, really wobbling. You can see I'm really fighting against that grain there. It really wants to run out like that. So I'm doing a lot of little twists to regain control and each little twist or wobble is a fresh cut. So that might have looked like one line of cutting, but it was actually like every one of those is a new cut. So I don't know, 50 cuts, 2,000 cuts, who knows, but a lot of cutting. And my left hand here is anchored. So if I'm coming around that tight section, it's not gripping as tight as it probably looks. It's really loosely resting on that shaft of that blade there. Okay, so this little fish needs some scales. Last time we just used a little... Um, 
decorative like X-shaped punch. And, you know, we got a good bit of texture and great for like beginner level to get some really quick and easy texture. This time I want actual scale shaped scales. So I'm going to spin this. Which way do I want him? So I'm going to come down. This is my, sorry, that's my 7F. 10 mils wide. So the F just means it's a fishtail, and a fishtail is one that just fans out like that, whereas this is a straight shank, you can see. It's the same width the whole way down. Just going to put him in, and I'm going to do a series of stop cuts. Because my grain is running this way, and I want these scales facing like around that, around here they're going to be really easy because they're going to be cutting across so my grain's like that, so cutting across. Up here, they're going with the grain. The timber will want to split out along there. So I'm just going to be really careful. I'm actually going to angle them slightly more than I probably would have just to really try and I might do some hanging off his body as well. Just being real careful so I don't split that out. So then I've got, gosh, you can probably hardly even see that. Hang on, let me hold that up better. See, I got those three stop cuts there. I'm then going to place the next ones like that, like that, like that, like that. So kind of really stagger them in what is hopefully a very scaly pattern. This is just stop cuts. Just straight up and down, nothing special about these at all. Just the fact that I'm being very careful is probably the most special thing. I don't want to cut the fin off, so I'm really tilting him on quite an angle there like that. So I'm not getting the whole uh, width of that blade cutting into that timber. Now I could, if I want to get really fancy, grade the size of this tool down as I came along his body. I'm not going to bother for this. I'm just going to place them a little closer together instead. Whilst I'm here, I'm going to cut the really fine VTOL. Sorry, it's not a really fine VTOL, is it? There's definitely much finer ones. It's just fine compared to the chunky one I use a lot. So cut those lines in. So you see, we've got all those scales on. Now, it's really important. Coming at this, I'm going to start from the tail as I do a wedge cut into all those stop cuts. If I came up here and started removing, I am then pushing all this. So if I remove these few lines, I'm then pushing this timber into this weakened area where I don't have a lot of backup. Whereas if I start at this end, all of the area of removed timber is going to stay behind me. So these are just really little wedge cuts because I didn't go very deep with those stop cuts. Obviously I'm using the same tool. That one wasn't wide enough to come into those. It's up to you how far back you start.
that one I did not come deep enough at all I might recut him I think I'm missing something here so I'm just gonna use a quarter of that tool in give myself a little one there I don't think any of these first ones I actually did deep enough so I'm just gonna refine that and give it a wiggle My little half one. Okay, there we have it. We've got a series of a scale pattern cut through. My only concern at the moment is that I haven't carved this water deep enough. So I'm gonna come back now, and even though I did wanna carve it shallow, just carve a couple of really deep ones. So in case all else fails, we will have a little bit of a ring pattern there. I'm gonna use a tighter, tighter tool. Uh, that is a, See that on there? That is a number eight, seven. So just a few really big, deeper ones. If I wasn't doing this on the live stream, I'd probably print it and see if that water was deep enough um, before, and then, you know, could clean it off and recarve if necessary. But that cleaning and recarving can like, take a fair bit of time, so I want to do it all in one for you today. Here we go. Just notice this is quite a staggered step down. I think that will probably be pretty ugly. So I'm using my big V tool and I'm cutting with the side of that blade there. To really remove that and then be incredibly lazy, cutting with that other blade down there. And I'm just going to get that 8 7 again and chop off some little bits of horizon line so hopefully it looks a little bit more wavy and not such a sharp, jagged line for the horizon there. Okay, so there you have that. That is our finished carved wood block. Bear with me a moment. I'm going to take this off and we will start uh, printing. And everybody, please cross your fingers that this will work out. Thank you. If you've got any questions whilst I'm doing this, now would be a great time to pop them in the chat. Or if you've got any uh, sort of recommendations or requests for future live streams, please let me know. I've had a few requests in the past and they've worked out well for something fun to do. So that plank there with my L brackets, that was just held on with um, two G clamps just onto the edge of the bench. Okay, so if you speak to like proper professional uh, printers, I think they generally, it's called inking up, but I think they'll generally ink up on like glass or a sheet of tin or something really flat. I don't have that. I have this old shelf from an old, old uh, kitchen cupboard. Nice and flat. I forgot my name. Is it Melamine? Um, that will work really well. 
you need a roller and you need printing ink. You can just use like a thick acrylic paint as well if you don't have ink and you can sort of improvise with like a very uh, fine sponge. If you don't have a roller, so there's our block. The space is tight right here. So you open up your ink. You just want a glob of that. Hang on one sec. You don't want dust in it. Do you know Woodwork Studio is a tall order, isn't it? So, love of ink, you get your roller. Got a lot of ink there. And you roll and roll. That roller is evenly coated. I'm just going to take a bit of that extra ink off because I think I put too much out. Last time I used uh, oil-based ink, this time I've learnt my lesson and I've gone and bought a water-based because it took like three days for the prints of the wood block to dry. So once that is inked up, your roller, let me move this out the way. Told you space was tight. You want to get your block and just roll. That's what we'll see. Oh, we are getting just the tops of that water showing through. Good news. I've got my board down on the ground, so I'm just going to bend over and ink that up rather than lifting it up and down a thousand times. Let's go back across that water. You can see I'm getting a little bit of the detail of what I was hoping for in the water, but I think for the majority of the cuts, I should have gone deeper than I did. Really trying to get over the top of those water drops. Rub out that background mess, don't need that. That drops a little lower than everybody else, so I'm gonna sneakily just grab him. But I'm loving how those scales look. That's really cool, isn't it? So we've got that. We then just need some paper. You can use a block. I've also heard like rubbing with a wooden spoon works really well. Uh, we're not that fancy here today. So I'm just going to use my hand. This is just plain white computer paper. I've got two pieces, one to keep nice and one to get really grubby. Just going to put that over the top. Try not to wobble it like I just did. And just really, I'm wondering if I don't have enough ink on this whole block. We'll find out. Really rub that all over. Nowhere near enough ink. Okay, let's go again. But. We are really going to really ink this up this time. So that's a good lesson. It needs a lot more ink than you think it does. Really lather it onto that roller. I've got my block. I suppose the timber is soaking up some of that as well, isn't it? Really trying to get that ink on. These little patches are going to go up um, and I don't like them so I'm going to really quickly, don't you carve without clamping your work down, but I'm just going to slice those off. It's the whole thing we were trying to avoid. Okay, we've got that. Let's get this out of the way. Fingers crossed for round two. Just thought it could be really cool if you had like a big rolling pin, maybe wrapped in like 
a bit of felt to give you a bit of softness. I think that might work really well to press that design out as well. Really trying to get that detail. Let's hope that extra ink served us well. Ah, it's way better. Look at that. Hang on, I'll tilt you up. Here I am again. So you can see that is today's design. I'm really happy with how that water's turning out. I think, let me show it with the one we did a few months ago. You can see exactly the same design, but the water in today's one is a lot more realistic using that sort of choppy method. I also really like how stark those scales are. I think that's really cool. And that's our previous one. So exact same design, but far better quality timber using far more uh, choice of tools. But this one still gets your message across. Oh, thanks for those of you who say it looks good. Oh, we've got a really useful comment here from Simone. If you use a wooden spoon, you don't need so much ink. And the first print is always a bit light. That makes sense because the timber would be soaking it up and I like that tip of the wooden spoon. I think next time I try that, I'm going to do that. But, yeah, how cool is that water? Um, that's all for today. If anyone has any questions, now is the time to pop them in the chat. Uh, if you'd like to see something funny as well, I've been working on a rocking horse at that end of my bench. So if you want to see a headless rocking horse upside down on a bench whilst its legs get clamped on, I'll show that to you. Quickly, whilst anyone types in any last minute um, questions you have, I'll take you on a little tour. Whoop, picked up the computer. What's, this is why there weren't so many clams behind me today. So here we have, as promised, headless rocking horse, upside down, legs in the air, having lots of fun. Normally I only clamp for 24 hours with the horses, but today, uh, not today, this winter I've been clamping them for 48 hours because there's so much moisture in the air. I've been just doing that for a bit of extra security. Um, like always, please like this video. Please subscribe to the Caltech YouTube channel as well. If you want to find me and my work, uh, my web website is oliviaoconnor.com.au and my Instagram and Facebook are Olivia O'Connor carving so please look those up i would love it if anybody did any woodblock carving or carving in general if you just sent me pics of those that's really fun i've had a lot of people send me photos of the bird whistles that we did last month that was really cool oh thanks simone well my full-time job is walking horse making so i'm glad it is working i'd like to clarify that one down on the ground there that's in rather a bad state i didn't i didn't make that one uh, that one's in for repair but thank you very much, everybody. I hope you have a great weekend and I will see you next month. Bye. Oops, not ended. All right, going now. Bye.